Welcome back to another episode of Naperville Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Josiah Schooneman. It's the penultimate week in the football regular season, which means week eight has playoff implications for multiple teams. Naperville North put on a show against Matia Valley last week and has a chance to secure an automatic playoff bid at home against Wabonzi Valley. Meanwhile, the Warriors are simply playing for pride in what has been a season to forget. Let's find out if the Huskies can officially get back in the playoffs. It's a rainy, cold night for some football. Naperville North travels to Wabonzi Valley. A win tonight for the Huskies, and they are officially in the playoffs. First snap of the game, Luke Elsie is looking for Sean Bison downfield, but his pass is picked off by Cole Clemens, who runs 30 yards in the other direction. The very next play, Aiden Gray hands off to Nathan Jacobs, who gets hit, and that knocks the ball loose, allowing Bryce Provis to pounce on the ball, recovering the fumble. The recovered fumble doesn't lead to anything, so the Huskies get the ball back. Gray hands off to Cole Errol, who gets a nice block from Jackson Kirsten, allowing him to run 22 yards for the opening touchdown. A couple of minutes later, North has the ball again. Gray hands off to Nathan Jacobs, who bobs and weaves his way through the Warrior defense, running 25 yards, putting the Huskies up 13-0. Final seconds of the first quarter, Luke Elsie is looking downfield, but he can't find a receiver. Eventually, he sees Sean Bison on the outside, but his pass is intercepted by William Korasek. Following the interception, North starts the second quarter in the red zone. Gray once again hands off to Jacobs, who forces his way into the end zone, extending the lead to 20. Final play of the first half, North once again works their way into the red zone. This time, Gray gives the ball to Danny Ela, who puts Naperville North up 34-0 going into halftime. Third quarter now, and Carson Marler is in at quarterback. He decides to keep it himself as he runs 27 yards down the sideline, tacking on another touchdown for the Huskies. Naperville North dominates the game and they clinch a playoff spot with a 41-0 win over Wabonzi Valley. The Nequa Valley Wildcats head to DeKalb for a Week 8 DVC matchup with the 6-1 Wildcats looking to boost their playoff resume. Big news for Nequa is that quarterback Mark Menneke is back in the lineup after being sidelined the past five weeks with multiple fractures in his right foot. After a Wildcat punt, the Barbs look to send the ball back to Nequa, but they call a fake. QB and punter Adrian McVicker picks up a new set of downs on the scramble. Now on the one-yard line, McVicker calls his own number and plows his way through for the score. Barbs up 7-0 with just over seven minutes left in the first. Now into the second, McVicker throws the ball up to Ethan McCarter, and he comes down with a beautiful catch. The grab extends the Cows' lead to 14-0 with 10 minutes left in the first half. Wildcats on the next possession are looking to get their offense going. Menneke rolls out and throws the ball in double coverage, but Grant Larkin is able to bring it down for the catch. Ryan Moeller back in at QB after Menneke was forced to leave the game with another injury. Moeller pitches it to Larkin, but he gets the ball stripped by a barbed defender, and they take it 50 yards into Nequa territory. DeKalb still up 14-0 with just under five to play in the first half. McVicker looks to get something out of the turnover, but he causes one of his own. Peyton Cool is there for the interception, but the Wildcats can't score before half. Into the fourth quarter and on fourth down, Moeller heaves the ball to Larkin, who shows off his vertical, but is unable to bring in the catch, and the Wildcats can't pull off a comeback. DeKal pulls off a huge upset and a big-time win, 14-0, to improve to 5-3, while Nequa falls to 6-2 on the season. Naperville Central continues their football road trip at Matia Valley, hoping to capture that important win number six to secure a playoff spot. They take on the host Mustangs who look to snap their two-game losing streak. The Mustangs are wanting to get out of their own territory, but Noah Larson throws a pick to Daniel Newsbaum. He brings the pickskin back inside the five-yard line, setting the Hawks up on the doorstep. 
Tyler Dodd is the one getting the call, and he gets in for the touchdown to make it 7-0. At this point of the season, you shouldn't be surprised to see Dodd everywhere. Here he gets the Chris McCormack pass and picks up over 25 yards on the play, and the Red Hawks are in the red zone. The Matia D is ready to shut down Dodd, but Chris McCormack has other plans by taking it in himself to extend the lead to 14-0. With halftime on the rise, the Hawks look to increase the score. McCormack tries to look for a target, but instead he finds Colin Shu who picks him off. Score remains 14-0 at the half. In the second half, Matia tries to stir up the offense, but Maverick Oli isn't having any of that as he brings down Larson for a loss. Red Ox quickly feed off the momentum as McCormack finds Jacob Conway for a big gain to put NC in scoring position. That score comes from Caleb Brown standing up. Red Ox are now 6-2 on the season and will host Naperville North next Thursday for part two of the Crosstown Classic. It's a rainy evening at Joliet Memorial Stadium where the Bennett Academy Red Wings are hoping to extend their two-game winning streak against Joliet Catholic. With a victory, the Red Wings will become playoff eligible. Last year, the Hilltoppers took down the Red Wings 42-20. Early on in the first, the Hilltoppers are facing a fourth down. TJ Schlegeter rolls to his left and tries to connect with Hunter Powell, but he's unable to haul it in. The Red Wings take over on downs. Later in the quarter, Joliet Catholic has taken the ball back and they hand it off to Powell who falls into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. 7-0 with 141 left in the first. On the ensuing Bennett possession, Jake Heppel scrambles to escape the pressure and fires a pass towards the sideline, but it's picked off by Bryant Weston of the Hilltoppers. JCA takes over inside the 10-yard line with 26 seconds left in the first quarter. Moments later, H.J. Grigsby takes the handoff and is stuffed before the goal line, but he receives a push from his big offensive lineman and crosses the plane. 14-0 with 15 seconds left. Now with three minutes left in the half, Powell gets the ball again and he easily strolls into the end zone for his second score of the game. This one gives the Hilltoppers a 21-0 lead. With a little over a minute left in the half, Grigsby takes the handoff, sheds a tackle, then bursts away from the defenders for a 48-yard TD run. JCA takes a 27-0 lead into half and would tack on two more scores en route to a 41-0 victory over Bennett. Coming up, we'll check out the girls' tennis sectional here on NSW. Hypnotize your way to savings. Breathing techniques to help you save. Looking to make saving a habit? Yeah, what's the secret? No secret. Just open a savings account at BMO and we'll give you a cash reward for every month you save. A cash reward? Just for saving. Mm hmm And when you open a checking account, we'll give you a $200 bonus to get your new savings habit started. Love that. What's your book? How to get a $200 bonus and a monthly cash reward for saving with BMO. He literally wrote the book on saving. Has me on the cover. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. We live in a safe community, but not a crime-free community. If you see something, say something. Be a Naperville Crime Stopper. We move from the turf to the courts for the girls' tennis sectional, taking place at Bennett Academy, with the host Red Wings looking to repeat as champions. The time has come for the girls' tennis sectional at Bennett Academy. The Red Wings come in as defending sectional champs, but DVC winners Naperville North and many other teams hope to play spoiler. Let's start with the doubles third place match featuring Wabanzi's Anika Srinivasan and Sophia Peranto taking on Wheaton Warrenville South's Kaylee McCabe and Lauren Morton. Right away, the Warrior duo is clicking as Peranto runs and hits the ball with authority for a point. The Tiger group responds to the swing as McCabe does it similar to Peranto and the advantage goes to the black and orange. Despite the great effort, it's McCabe and Morton winning the third place match by scores of 6-0 and 6-4. Although Peranto and Trinivasan qualify for state, the first set of Warriors to do so since Hannah Owens back in 2016. 
Jumping to the third place singles match that involves Bennett Academy's Meredith Converse taking on another Tiger and Brooke Itersagen. It's a long rally early, but Converse finds a way to keep her patience and sends it back where Itersagen can't get the return. Converse wins set 1-7-5. Although this matchup features a long go-around of rallies, Itter Sagan and Converse are doing everything they can to keep it rolling and Converse's chance hits the net, giving the point to Itter Sagan. This match is a draw, so winner takes it all in the next set, and it's Itter Sagan continuing to bring the heat on Converse and winning the next two sets by scores of 6-2 and 7-6. The singles championship match features Sofia Alalru from Naperville Central and Oswego Savannah Millard. Millard is looking to keep her juice after a hard-fought semi-final match, but Olaru is no stranger to the stage. The two are in a very competitive set, and it's Olaru catching Millard off guard by getting the tennis ball over her head. Olaru is all business in her championship match, winning 6-1 in both sets, and wins another sectional individual title. Our last match is the doubles championship between Naperville North's Brooke Kaufman and Gabby Lee against Bennett's Shane Delaney and Claire Lapotka. Kaufman is the one getting the hit opportunities and Delaney can't get the return to go. Although Delaney and Lapotka don't blink as everyone is battling for that point and Lapotka puts enough firepower to haul in the point. Kaufman and Lee are ready for anything that comes their way. A very intense rally is happening on the courts between the squads, and it's the two Huskies winning the match 6-1 and 6-3. That also helps Naperville North capture the sectional plaque ahead of Bennett Academy and Naperville Central. For this play of the week, we look at girls swimming with Husky Chloe Chen having a big night in the pool. First, she competes in the 50-yard freestyle and takes first place with a time of 25.42 in a close finish at the wall. The Naperville North swimmer isn't done yet though, because she also ends up pulling away and winning the 100-yard freestyle as well. Great work from Chen. In these complicated times, local news has never been more important. DailyHerald.com lets you stay connected to your community, wherever you are. We were there when your kid discovered poison ivy. Now remember, leaves of three. Let it be. We were there for that, and we're here for everything else. Here, it's personal, because we get to know you. Wabonzi Valley junior golfer Salil Kanduja burst onto the scene as a freshman two seasons ago. This year, he continued his push into the top tier of prep golfers in the state of Illinois, finishing in third place at the 3A IHSA meet last weekend. Patrick Cotto has the story of this warrior great and his quest for excellence, sponsored by Edward Elmhurst Health. Despite occasional struggles during the regular season, the Wabonzi Valley boys golf team was able to maintain their swing, eventually securing a second place finish at the DVC tournament and qualifying as a team to sectionals after a third place regional finish. Once again, the key contributor to the Warriors was Salil Kanduja, who not only won a third straight regional as an individual, but also qualified for state for a third straight season and took home a state medal as well after a third place performance. It's a great experience in that environment as a competitive and um, not in the competitive scope as well. It's, it's, it's probably one of the more fun tournaments I have throughout the season. Kenduja not only spent his junior season playing with the Wabonzi Valley boys, he also competed in numerous tournaments including the Illinois PGA Open back in August and various out-of-state tournaments that actually prevented Salil from competing for the green and gold on opening week of the season. All of those high-level tournaments helped the Warrior to a better approach on the local courses. I think that the experience of playing in those tournaments throughout the summer and like getting comfortable being in pressure situations like 
totally affected for the better how I felt in the tournament because I wasn't really that nervous. At the start of the back nine on the second day at state, his swings really begun to show off all the hard work. On holes 10, 11, and 12, he eagled and birdied twice to jump to the top of the individual leaderboard. He did have a few rough breaks the rest of the way, but he finished his round with a score of 75 on day two and 147 overall. A proud accomplishment for Kanduja and one of the best state performances in school history. At the end of the day, that's it's golf. Can't can't it, everything can't always go your way. And I I guess you can say the same thing that on the first three holes, like I made some decently long putts that like when you look at the make percentage, things went my way on those putts. So Kenduja joins the groups of Will Choi, Jason Mars, Alec Meyer, and Thomas O'Brien as Wabonzi All-State golfers, while O'Brien remains as our lone area golfer to capture an individual state title, which he won back in 2010. Head coach Eric Floodberg has had the privilege to watch these Warriors succeed, and watching Kenduja's success adds on to another milestone. Salil, that's kind of our little Mountain Rushmore of great players right now, and Salil is definitely deserving of being a part of, of, that, of, of the greats. We can still sit there and look at all the accomplishments that Salil has already achieved, and he still has one more year left, which is going to be a great, a great year, but then also a sad year, just because knowing that you know, that's going to be kind of our last hurrah. His Wabonzi career isn't over yet as he and many other key contributors will return in the fall of 2023 with high expectations. With the success he had this year, there is no doubt Kanduja will find himself back at the den at Fox Creek for his final year. I'm so excited. I think I've always looked up to the seniors on the team and it's a big, it makes me feel good that I am now that senior leader on the team that like other freshmen and um, incoming um, younger kids can look up to because like without my senior class um, when I was a freshman, I don't know how good a golfer I would be just from their support. Kanduja and the rest of the Warriors are already excited to show the state what they can do next fall. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Patrick Cotto. Now we begin the postseason run for cross country with the boys and girls DVC meets at Wabonzi Valley. A lovely morning for a run at Wabonzi Valley High School as the Warriors host the DVC Girls Cross Country Championship. At the start of the race, Naperville Central Junior Liv Phillips gets out to the front of the pack, as she often does, followed by the dozens of other competitors as the starter's pistol sounds. In the first mile, Naperville North runner Julie Pio gets out to the early lead just ahead of Phillips and teammate Shania Tandon. Rihanna Tandon just a little further back with Ava Hendren from Central and Logan Brennan from North. Then we see Maya Hall from Matia Valley, Gretchen Leland from Nequa Valley, and Lily Bayback from Wabonzi Valley. They would all go on to finish in the top 12. Other runners like Lexi Para and Annika Lovisa from North, as well as Lola Satcher Morales, Addison George, and Abby Mogg from Central, and Karima Gonzalez from DeKalb are there. Zoe Kirkman and Brooke Horning from Matia also near the top 20. Just past the midway point, P.O. is still in front, Shania Tannen is still right there with Liv Phillips, and it's all Huskies and Red Hawks in the top five. Stretch Liv Phillips emerges with a great finish to win the DVC Girls Cross Country Championship at 17 minutes 52 seconds. P.O. crosses the line in second, another flip as Rihanna Tannen passes up twin sister Shania as they finish third and fourth respectively, Naperville North is able to win the team conference title once again. Naperville Central with a great showing as well to take second place, while Ava Hendren rounds out the top five individuals, Matia Valley in third, and Nico Valley in fourth. Hinsdale Central will host our five local teams for the regionals next week. I mean, North is always a tough one to run against. They have such a great program, such good runners. Um, but I mean, us personally, we've just been really training all summer, going into the season. I think that we really made a lot of improvements, both individually and as a team. And I think that's just really cool to see. We have improved so much this season. A lot of our good runners left last year, and so many of us have gotten faster and closed the gap, and we really just like leveled up as a team. All of us got better. We're all working. The boys' DVC cross-country meet is back at Obanzi Valley High School on a cool but comfortable Saturday morning. Six teams in contention for the title after the Warriors took the crown in 2021. Nequa Valley and Naperville Central are the favorites to lift the plaque entering the meet. 
The race begins, we see dozens of runners heading out to onto the course in hopes of gaining that early edge. In the opening mile, we see Riley Newport from DeKalb in front. Zach Close and Ryan Palmer from Nico Valley are just behind him with Lucas De La Cruz from Naperville Central, Nicholas Castrione and Robert Glenn from Nequa, and Jacob Barraza from DeKalb. Austin Brown and Sam Urban from Matia Valley in the pack as well, along with Zach Self and Austin McIntyre from Wabonzi Valley. Other Red Hawk runners, Thomas Mack, Tyler Browning, and Foster Shelbert, also in the hunt for the top 15. Gabe Russell and Colin Corcoran for Naperville North are in there too. Midway through the race, we see Newport and Close separating themselves a bit from the pack. Ryan Palmer, De La Cruz, Barraza, Tyler Browning, and Thomas Mack, and Andres Lopez from Nequa are in the next group. At the two-mile point, we see Newport out in front and Close within striking distance, while the rest of the runners battle to round out the top ten. At the finish line, Riley Newport wins the DBC Championship at 14 minutes, 54 seconds. Zach Close finishes in second, 10 seconds later. Newport's teammate Jacob Barraza takes third. Naperville Central's Lucas De La Cruz is fourth. And Ryan Palmer and Nicholas Castillon take fifth and sixth, as Nequa Valley takes the DBC Team Championship and Coach Paul Vandersteen's final DBC meet as head coach. The Red Hawks take second place with DeKalb in third, as the regional championship will be held next Saturday in Hinsdale. I don't know, it's a really big deal. I mean, the conference is the last race for a lot of people, so I think it was just trying to uh, go out there and, and do our best and just trying to honor that legacy. So. Uh, well, I mean, I feel pretty great about getting fourth place. Uh, the course, I don't love it, you know, the hill's pretty tough, but at the end of the day, everyone needed to run it, so I really didn't do anything too different. Uh, as far as us getting second place, we didn't run our top two guys, so I think that if we had, we had a really good chance of securing first place. Uh, but overall, even though we didn't do that, I think everyone ran their best, and that's really all we can ask for, so I'm happy about it. Yeah, I think we have a really close bond as a team, um, and I think that um, just together it makes it a lot easier and just like uh, we can all, we all share the same goal, so. After the break, we have late season girls volleyball here on NSW. Hypnotize your way to savings. Breathing techniques to help you save. Looking to make saving a habit? Yeah, what's the secret? No secret. Just open a savings account at BMO and we'll give you a cash reward for every month you save. A cash reward? Just for saving. Mm hmm And when you open a checking account, we'll give you a $200 bonus to get your new savings habit started. Love that. What's your book? How to get a $200 bonus and a monthly cash reward for saving with BMO. He literally wrote the book on saving. Has me on the cover. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. Rise and shine with The Morning Show, presented by NCTV 17. Join host Stefan Holt, NBC5 news anchor and now Naperville resident, for Continental Breakfast and one hour of live television on Thursday, November 17th at 7.30 a.m. at the Chicago Marriott of Naperville. Proceeds benefit Naperville Community Television. For more information, including tickets and sponsorship opportunities, visit nctv17.org. We head to the net to check out girls volleyball. It's been an up and down season for Naperville Central. They take on Nequa Valley, who has been a tough out in the DVC, but looks to stop a two game losing streak. After losses to Naperville North and St. Charles East, Nequa Valley comes into Naperville Central hoping to get back in the win column. The host Red Hawks look to bounce back after falling to the Wildcats in straight sets on September 22nd. Early on, the Blue and Gold are in business, starting with the Brianna Jones kill to put MV up 6-3. Red Hawks are able to crawl into the deficit as McKenna Devick's kill shot is denied, but NC keeps it alive and Sarah Butler sends it back over. Hawks trail 10-7. That doesn't seem to bother Nequa because L. O'Neill also sends one back for the point. Wildcats lead 13-9. Brianna Jones is back in the action. The Red Hawks struggle to return the ball and once they do, Jones takes advantage of it with the floater. That extends the Wildcats lead to 17-10. 
Central is continuing to show their fight, and that is thanks to a kill by Sofia Zanka to cut the deficit to 10. Set point for the Cats, and it's Livia Adams, whose first opportunity doesn't go, but gets it back and makes it work on the second try. Nikwa wins set 1, 25-17. In the second set, the Red Hawk defense makes Nikwa work hard for their point. Once they get that reset chance, Yulia Shepkina jumps into the picture and gets the kill to go. 9-4 Cats. A couple of serves later, it's now 11-5 visitors, but the home team is not giving up. McKenna Divic sees the ball and just smacks it down for the kill. Central tries for another kill with Divic, but Anja Kelly shuts that door quickly with the block to hold a 13-6 advantage. Equal is all over Central in this one, up 19-9, and the assault is continued by Shepkina, who can just tap it down. Match point for the Wildcats, and the lucky contestant to put it away is Amanda Duncan, who shows no mercy on the kill. Equal Valley walks out of Naperville Central with the two-set win. So we had a Matia sweep last week for the play of the week. This week it's a Husky sweep with a backup quarterback making a big play. Carson Marler in the game for Naperville North and he scrambles out of the pocket to run 27 yards down the sideline for the touchdown. A great run by the second string QB showing off some speed to get past the Wabonzi defenders and find the end zone. That's it for the show. Join us next week for an action packed slate of games. It will be the final week in the regular season for football Cross country moves into regionals while boys soccer and girls swimming begin their postseasons. Don't forget we're always online. Check us out on our website for extended highlights and stories at nctv17.org. You can also find us on social media at nctv17 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Josiah Schuneman. Thanks for watching.